about halfway through the lecture. Oops. Okay. Let's see, look down here. Yes. So this is the thing. Let me just double check the mockup. Okay, that downloaded. Awesome. And I'll open that up. This is the kind of the spec sheet. So we're going to have the project due on Wednesday, October 13. That'll be the, the day due date for that. Um, cool. That looks like that downloaded perfect. Close that out. Um, so it's a 12 by 12, the album covers, and we're doing the fronts and the back. And we're doing one of your favorite bands, kind of a, a made up new album that they would come. And then the second album is parents, grandparents, whatever their favorite stuff. So that would come, that this one here is basically kind of a remake. So, you know, if, I don't know, I was thinking Joshua Tree, you know, from U2. So if, you know, U2 is, your, you know, your dad's favorite album, you can remake that album okay um but this one is kind of one of your favorite artists and a kind of a made up album again would let you be a little bit more creative there and that kind of get tied down um so quickly just things that you're going to find on the on the album uh the artwork obviously the title and the artist or musician on the back you can typically have a list of songs the band members and or songwriters. Um, and then there's legal information, UPC, all that kind of stuff, typically on the bottom. And we'll, we'll go through that today. Um, and then you're gonna to do the um, mock up the disc. Um, so that is the, um, uh, the, the, the label. Okay, and maybe that's mis confusing. I think maybe make it label. Um, and then you're going to put it into a mock up file. You're going to save it as a PDF and we're going to, you're going to email it to me. I should add that in there. Let me actually, let me revise that. Um, I'm going to have you email to my personal account. That way we don't run into issues of canvas or, um, Or, or Fullerton Cal, full, full Cal website act or email acting up. Okay, and then this was the album disc label. And this makes sense to you guys? Tell me if it doesn't, I can, I can make a change now that we're doing it. It makes sense so far. Okay. And return as a PDF. And read again. There. Make that a bold. Let me save this again. And I'm going to export this as the file save replace export. So this is in InDesign, guys. If you're like, what is this? This is InDesign. Um, really good with type layout. And again, it's kind of my, my go to for that. So I'm going to close that out again, and I'm going to come back to Muse. I'm going to re-upload that file with that couple quick changes there on that. Um, so that this will be, you can find this up on the website. And then also that file um, for the the pdf or psd the the mock-up file so i'm going to go over the that again today and how to do that and um i want to go over a site that i use to get a lot of those kind of things 
Let me just upload this updated one. And we'll be good to go. Okay. Okay, so we get that there, and that's good. All right. Um, all right, so let me close this out. And let's get to doing up Photoshop. All right, so when we last left last class, we were um, playing with the the album and it was the Billy Joel and pull that back up again. We had this that we were working with and um, did we do the album? The mock up there. I, don't know if I, did. I guess I didn't save the other. Maybe I did. Let me open this one up. This is our PSD. Yesterday I got to do Ed, Ed Sharon and no, I just deleted those off. So we'll, don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna redo the backside today. Um, so we're gonna replace that. Let me see back here. Did I save it? Okay, we we I have the record, but I don't have the words. So. That's okay. Don't worry. We're going to go through this again to mock up. So ultimately, what you guys are going to do at the end is you're going to you're going to get basically um, it's going to be basically three files. You'll have one like this with the front and the label. You'll save it again, um, just the label, so I can see that, and then you'll save it again with the back of the record. Okay. So we haven't created the back yet. So it'll be basically three pictures you're going to put together as a PDF. And I'll show you guys too, between now and the time of, of turning, how to combine, how to put three pictures together or three files together to make it one PDF. Um, Cause that's going to be important. I think as you go down the line as designers and creatives, to be able to put things together. Um, and in particular as a PDF, because PDFs have become so prolific in everything we do. And most companies want you to, do that kind of stuff for them <clears throat> or if you're making up something else you're going to want um even something as silly as i i do invoices for um one organization that that buys my national park geek stuff and they want me to combine all the invoices into one pdf for some reason it makes it easier so instead of sending them 10 separate pdfs i combine them all into one pdf um, and then they can open it up and see all 10 at one time where other places could care less and just want one at a time. So, um, you know, it, it seems kind of silly, but you know, the PDFs and working with them will be important. So that's kind of why I have you guys turn them in as PDFs to get used to um, working with that kind of situation. So, um, so let's go back, question came up. Um, actually, before I do that real quick, let me uh, show you a, a, a website that I love for stuff and, um, I think you're gonna like it too. It's called Design Cuts. And it's a it's a site where e-commerce, where you can buy um, Photoshop thing, helpers. We'll call them helpers, add-ons, um, brushes for Illustrator, Procreate, and those kind of things. 
Also, they're really good for typography. And they also have um, images and so forth that you can use or buy. And, and the really cool thing about this site is everything you buy off of them, they've all gone through the process of getting legal to use. So if I, we'll just say this, if I bought this set of, of illustrations, well, that's brushes, that's not even that. I thought it was, a, yeah, let me find one that's got things you can, um, okay, we'll just pick this and see if it is. So there's 710 elements in here, um, pictures. And you can basically, they're showing you kind of examples of what you can do. <clears throat> this is pretty much Photoshop. And these are, I love, I love this kind of stuff. But you can um, use these and you can see they're already pre-cut, which is beautiful. And there's food and there's, um, they call it random. And then there's technology, transportation. This is pretty nice. And then buildings, um, postcards, flowers. And every one of these is a separate picture that you can use. Uh, there are PNGs, which means there's transparency. So there is no background. So if you got this palm tree, it's gonna be the palm tree with just the palm tree. It's already gonna be masked out. Um, so I don't know if they have a mask on it or it's just been clipped to this, but e either way, it doesn't matter. Um, and then there's, I don't know, this is really nice. Furniture, paper, scribbles. So everything you see here um, can be used in production. Meaning if I wanted to make a, um, I don't know, a, a postcard, I could take one of these pictures or images and use it, right? And I can combine them together. Obviously, we do something really cool and creative, but they've all been cleared where I don't care who took this picture of the cat. I can now just take this cat and I could even stick it on a postcard or I could stick it on a t-shirt and sell it, okay? So for the low, low price of this case, I think it was $29, I get all of these images and I can do whatever I want with them. Um, including selling, not selling them directly, but selling them on products, which is kind of unique. Most times when you download a, a picture, they allow you to use it in you know, brochures or, or a poster and stuff, but you can't just put it on something and sell it. So you couldn't put that picture on a coffee mug and sell it. And, and with the stuff that you buy from this site, you can. Um, so up here is extended license for personal and commercial projects. So um, really good, that's not a bad deal there on that one. I mean, I might have to come back to that. I wanna put it in a cart just to keep that one. I like, I like, I love this kind of stuff. So we'll save, check that out later. Um, what they also do is have these, these bi-weekly bundles. And, and this week's, or this two weeks bundle is the central Photoshop bundle. And, and you get these elements. I'm just gonna run this video real quick to kind of show you what you're getting. So what you're getting is these little add-ons that you can put into your Photoshop um, to make it do things. And, and I'll, I'll show you how to do some of that. But you get these elements and they're just incredibly cool to work with and they will save you a lot of time. So this is $29 and you're gonna get all of these elements. They're not all previewed here in this, um, little video, but I'm gonna just kind of show you at the minute, two minutes here. Um, get the volume up a little bit. Play.
Okay, so <clears throat> they come out with these things every two weeks and they're all kind of thematic. Sometimes it might be typefaces, sometimes it's something like this Photoshop or Illustrator um, add-ons, or it might be just kind of uh, images um, that you can start to use. I mean, they'll have something soon for the holidays because Christmas coming up and you can get those elements. Um, and they're really good, I guess. I get these, you know, a couple of times a year, I'll buy one. So um, basically you can just kind of sign up on here somewhere, maybe join join us and, and get into their mailing list. And they'll send you a notice of, of what it is. And, and they're pretty good. They don't bombard you too much with, with email. But what they do is on Friday, they have a freebie Friday. And they'll send you a, a link to, you know, it might be a typeface, or a series of illustrations, things that you can download for free. So for that alone, it's worth signing up. And, and it's, again, it's very good quality stuff. And it, what's really cool is you can use these things over and over. So I'm gonna show you how I use some of these things um, as we start to build this stuff up. So design cuts, designcuts.com. And um, look at that. I would recommend again, go sign up for it and look at their stuff they got, like I said, a lot of cool stuff. So um, it's just a matter of looking through and seeing what you might look for. You know, and if you, I, you know, I get stock pictures from here and then they have, like I said, other textures and, and all kinds of stuff that you can use. And again, you can use them for anything you want. And like I said, paintbrushes and um, that, that photo thing. I, I still, am, I'm digging that. I love that kind of stuff. So, um, We'll get back into that. So we have the, the album here and we're gonna make a new one. So I wanna do the back. So we're just gonna kind of leave that alone, not worry about it. So new, and we're at a 12 by 12 format, okay? Um, 300 pixels, 300 DPI and RGB, that should be a preset. We'll just hit create and we get a, a basically a blank canvas that we could work from. Now, a question came up, I believe, it, correct me if I'm wrong here, Someone had a texture they wanted to bring into this, or was it was it too big or too small for that that texture? What had, who had their question about that? Yeah. Is asleep already? I have the like image, not image, but the thing on Photoshop already. Okay. I'm not able to, like, I don't know how to crop it down to 12 it's, by 12. It's too big. You say it's too big? It looks too big. Okay. So let me, let me, I'm going to place a file. I'm going to open another file that's too big. I want to know that will be. And um, let me just, let me just find some, something new to work with. Even, even I get tired of seeing pictures all the time. I'm sure you guys do too. He's like, oh my God, he opened that picture again. I can't believe it. Can't believe it did that. Right. Let's do, we'll do a quick Sequoia. Let me see what I have in here. Sequoia, there's a fire going on up there. Hopefully the, the trees are gonna be okay. And we're just gonna open this one up. I'm going to open it as a raw again, just to kind of refresh you guys mm -hmm. as to um, working with raw files and stuff. And then I'm going to ultimately bring that in. So here's my the picture. Um, I'm going to go back through and kind of clean it up a little bit with my raw. I'm just going to pull out some of the shadows. I'm going to take down. The, see the highlights are, are washing out the trees up here. So I'm going to take those, take that down a little bit. Um, Take the whites down, blacks up a little texture, a little clarity, a little dehazing. Dehazing works really, really nice. Um, the vibrance, saturation. So before, that's the original when I opened it. Um, and here is the um, camera raw after I made just some basic, quick basic adjustments. Now remember, we're gonna open this as an object, a smart object. That way, if I double click on it and stuff, it's gonna bring me back to here. So I can make those, those edits and changes to it. So it's here and I can tell you, I have my ruler turned on up here. Um, zero is here. So this is 16 inches by 10 and a half, not even 12. 
So I want to make this thing 12 by 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, my canvas. Now canvas is the background. Okay, so think of it literally as a, you went to the art store and bought a canvas. You bought a 12 by 12 inch canvas and you're going to paint on it. Um, so we're not worried about the image size. We know that's 16 plus 10, somewhere in that ballpark. But I want to make the canvas. So right now, 16 by 10, I want to make this 12 by 12. So I'm just going to go 12 by 12. And what it's going to do by having it basically set here in this, this little dot in the center, it's going to center that 12 by 12, that picture within the 12 by 12 area. So I'm going to click OK, see how it comes out. Uh, canvas will be smaller per seed. Yes, I know. So here is that uh, file. And it's here. You can see I have the whole thing here. I can move it around up and down. And it's at this point, it's too small. It, well, it, it, well, it's big. It's too big this way, but it's too small up and down. So I'm going to go Command T, which is transform. And I can see how big that picture is. So what I want to do is I want to enlarge it actually to make it fill the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to drag the corner and come down. Now, once I have it here, I can adjust right to left to get the look and feel that I'm uh, going to be going for. Okay, so I'm just going to move it there. And when I when I hit return, I'm not. I'm not really changing the picture size. I'm just, the canvas is what you can see. So I can come back and move this thing around later if I want to. It's just a layer uh, within uh, the, the trees themselves. Okay, so um, that's there. Now, um, I know we talked about the sky and those kind of things. So let me... Um, let me open up. I'm going to find my my some design cut stuff. I have some stuff on my desktop here from uh, the design cut. So let me just find here. Um, this looks like it's all okay. So here's some patterns, some textures, um, some item. I got to look, and I don't know if they're all going to be. Photoshop compatible, but it looks like it. There's some like some wreaths that were done. Um, seamless patterns, which that means if I can I can put these next to each other, kind of make a big item. And the cool thing, these are all coming from the design cuts. They all come with directions. Like this is there's directions on and stuff to help you through. So if you're like, how do I use it? Um, they have files that let you that you see how it is and they like put them together. I've used these before. Um, and again, I'm just kind of using the animal. I don't use the background because I'm doing something else with it. Um, so they're kind of cool. So I don't know they had a bird in there. That's pretty nice. And um, what else we have in here? This one's like, if you see OTF, TTF, those are typefaces. True type and open type. That's what that stands for, open type font or true type font. So you can add those to your computer. Um, what is this? These are some really weird kind of backgrounds that we can kind of play with and change. Let me just see. And you can see they're all good resolution, 29 meg. These are, you know, some really big files. I don't know if I want that now. Um, some gold foil looks if you want. So, um, Decays, paper, and you can get that texture. Um, let me do that. Let me pull the paper texture just so you can see it. So I'm going to open it. I'm going to copy. All right. What are we doing here? Oh, it's What happened? Oh, give me a break here. Something going on. What happened to my computer? What did I do? It's 
give me a sec. Something hit something here. I had something yesterday. I don't know what it is. I got a feeling my daughter's doing she's doing something to my computer. She comes on here and does little coding projects at night. And going on that one works okay let me open up something else maybe it's a file planning to go to type this and there's even things like here these are like like pre-made posters things you can kind of work with if you wanted to use this i don't know you could print this out and put it on a pillow you could do that right i mean it's totally legal to do it so it's kind of Pretty awesome to do. Um, birds, the birds are awesome. I like that one. Let me open that one. It's a PNG, it'll be transparent. And I'm gonna put that over here into my um, record. You can see that here. And again, it's getting lost a little bit because um, we talked about type being one color on top of the photo. Same thing here, it's one color. So in this case, I, I'm almost sure white is gonna look better. So I'm just gonna do a quick invert. And I think that's gonna work and I'm gonna just find a home for it. And I'm gonna then flip this image to make it work here. Image rotation, and I'm gonna flip horizontal. Oops, sorry, I'm gonna do the canvas. I wanna do the image. So edit, transform, and flip horizontal. Watch when it's, it's selecting that background by accident. I'm going to give the bird a little, stand him up a little bit. And just, we're just putting it. So we're, we're basically building the background. And then we had that, those textures. Um, so let me find something that's kind of like a big texture. And we're going to put that on here and just show you how those kind of things can work. Uh, uh, question as far as is making sense with you guys what I'm doing? I don't really want to. Those. Yeah, it's making sense. Okay. Um, I don't know. Well, that's kind of cool. I don't know what this is, but it's kind of cool. So I'm just opening this up. It's they called it the metallic ferment. I have no idea what this is, but there's like <coughs> this really cool texture. So I'm gonna copy it, Command A, Command C, and I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna paste it. I'm gonna just put it on top, it's on top. Then you're gonna go, well, that didn't really help a whole lot, but this is where the blend modes come into play. So as I play with blend modes and go over, you can see what it's doing. It's adding this texture and so forth. So it's a matter of going through and seeing if I get one that happens to work the way I want it to work um, and create things. And again, these aren't permanent in the sense that the color, I can always come back and uh, change the color of that texture. So I'm just kind of popping it on top. Um, the one thing about the textures, a lot of times they kind of create this uniform kind of feel. Oh, that's something bizarre, cool at the same time. Let me see what else we got. That's, oh, look at that. That did something, look at that hue. Okay, so let's say we have this here and you're gonna go out. Well, it's a little bit too obtuse, very, very heavy. That's where the opacity can come in guys. And I can just drop this down. And what I'm doing, is kind of adding that kind of texture over everything. And you can, you can see it when I turn it off where it's just kind of coming over. And that can kind of be a way that we can unify things and kind of merge things together um, to keep the images going. So right now I'm just kind of playing with the background. In my mind, what I'm doing is I'm gonna have somewhere up in here, I'm gonna do a layout, probably an opacity box, put some text on it with the list of the songs and the, uh, the artists and such. Uh, down here, I'll do some the legal stuff and UPC. And I got the bird here just because birds are cool. Um, so I'm gonna make this a little more dramatic. Push that up a little bit. Just getting that come through. And again, if I wanna change the color by chance, you can kind of see that there, it's kind of a very gray kind of thing. Um, 
I can just kind of do an, a, a, an opacity box on top of that, right? I can do a, a uh, we'll just use saturation and I can get it so it's only going to be working down by clicking here. It's only masking down. I'm going to colorize and I can kind of pick and you can see as I'm moving this slider, I'm colorizing that layer of texture and it's actually changing the color of the picture. I'm going to go yellow and I can make it lighter or darker in here. So I'm playing it only with um, that texture layer below. I'll go to green. Here's, you know, before and after. Again, it's a nice little subtle tint, but it's making a difference uh, with that image. And we're going to call that good. And you can see here, it's only affecting uh, that layer below. And again, the cool thing about this is if I decide I want it blue, double click, come back in here, and I can make it blue and call it a day. Okay, so I can do whatever I need to it's, it's completely non-destructive and I can make adjustments later down the line, which is really what you kind of want. And likewise, if I decide my background image here, um, I need to make some changes, I can open it back up because it's a, a um, smart object and make those adjustments here in the raw. So I can even push the green here more. I'm gonna push the green yellow more. So there's quite a different original to the new one. And it's updating it. And there we go. So now I make a wow, this is a little bit too, I got too much yellow going on in here. I can then come back to my um, adjustment, hue saturation adjustment, and maybe get a little bit more red back into it. Like orange, check the red down here. Okay, so we're just going to call that. We'll call that a day. All right, so now we've got the background. Don't notice not the best, best design in the world. We're just kind of working with it. So does that make sense for, if you have something bigger or smaller, how you can kind of adjust that? Especially if there's gonna be a background? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me see how big that, let me just check this file back here. So let's say you wanted this as your album cover back. It looks pretty square to start with, but this is big. It's 50 inches by 50 inches. That's huge. Okay, but it's 72 DPI, so it's not like the best resolution. But if I make this um, 12 by 12, look at that. Magically, it comes out to 300. Okay, so, and that's something we can definitely work with. If I click that, okay, nothing really visually changed, but now with the canvas and the file itself, both of them are 12 by 12. So if I look under, um, canvas size, it's going to show 12 by 12. Okay. So initially it was 50 by 50. In this case, because it was all proportional, I click in 12 by 12. It also up here, because you can see this little, little anchor, this like link, chain link. It's like a chain link fence. They're all kind of linked together with resolution. If I change one, it changes all of them. So if I make this, you know, 10, the other one goes to 10, and then you see the resolution goes up to 360. That makes sense. If I took this down to six by six, the resolution 600. Okay. Um, so we'll do that. So now it's six by six. I don't want that. I really want, just say it opened up that way. I want to make a 12 by 12 canvas size. I'm going to say my canvas, I want 12 by 12. Click OK. And it did this. So here is the canvas, the 12 by 12. I can then um, select that layer. Let me make a duplicate here so I can change it. And I'm going to enlarge. So this has a white built into it. I probably, when I made that, I should have been a transparency, but it doesn't matter. I'm just now I'm going to enlarge that texture to fit in here. So it's still going to be roughly 12 by 12 on the inside. It's just bigger because I have this white border. I should have made it transparent instead. If I was worried about file size, I could crop this now and just kind of crop it down a little bit. 
to make a 12 by 12 if I want to, and that's gonna get rid of that back side, okay? And up here I can do, um, Twelve by twelve, and you can see that one in there. Okay, and then I I want this three hundred PPI and hit return. And what it's going to do is it's going to save that to twelve by twelve. And it's getting rid of all that extra area. So that should be twelve by twelve. Let's double check it. Twelve by twelve. Okay, this layer doesn't matter anymore. It's trash, trash. Okay, and then I can bring this in or I can add on top of this to continue my, my design and my productions. All right, so back over here, um, one thing I realized I haven't saved, and how do I know? Because you can see right here, there's a little asterisk that pops up. That's telling me I haven't saved. So if you see that on a file, um that shows you you didn't save it yet so over here you can see that asterisk i didn't save it um there i don't want to save it because i just going to keep the original as is don't save um but here i haven't saved so i need to hit save i'm going to as i hit save it's going to default to psd with this name of the file itself so um i'm just going to call this um Billy back is going to be the back of the album. And I'm going to go put this in the same folder. Desktop. Class picks in here. Boom. All right. So now I've got a, a PSD file that I'm working with. Um, that's 12 by 12. And we have this here. So I'm going to add some text quickly. So I'm going to just kind of do my opacity boxes that we chatted about last class. And Put that there. Oops, didn't want to do it on that layer. Let's do a new layer. And I'm going to put that on. Now, if I want to make it more, I think I have to do that beforehand. So let me, I'm going to give it a rounded box. I'm going to do 50 pixels up here. This is showing you the roundness of it. So when I draw this in, it should give me, a, it's giving me a little bit of a round box it just rounded those off in illustrator it's very very easy to do this in photoshop it's a little more a little more wonky uh but you can make those changes there with that so we're good with that and then of course i'm going to play with the opacity just to bring that down of course i want to i wanted to see it but not too much um i might even let me try a drop shadow just to kind of see what that looks like so i'm going through my effects down here and i'm going to do the uh drop shadow I'm going to put this into a black. And I'm, I want to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of moving this around on my screen. Pull that up so I can see where I'm going here. Okay, so there's my drop shadow. And I want to move it up here a little bit. And I'm going to bring it in. So I don't want it so far off the edge. So that's the distance, the pixels. The spread is going to if go tight to wide. You can see that there. And the size. I'm going to come back with my spread. I want to soften a little bit. I'm just kind of giving it some definition. Um, again, when you have this panel open, the style guides, it's worthwhile trying something else. Maybe I turn that off and I want to go to, you know, something like a pattern overlay and you can see what that's doing. It's put, this is actually behind that um, item. And there's some things that are built into the Photoshop if you want. Um, So theater's kind of there. And again, they're just kind of, who knows what they're going to do. They're going to do some weird things sometimes. Um, so that's putting patterns on top of that, which we don't want. Um, color overlay we don't need. Inner shadow. A stroke might be nice. There's a stroke. 
Okay, and we can kind of play with that as to the size and the mode. Okay, just to kind of do something. Maybe I'll do that. That's kind of cool. So I'm going to do this. We start normal. And I'm going to drop the size down. I'm just going to make, give it this like magenta stroke. Kind of go, we may as well go crazy if we're going to go crazy. And look at something that's going to be there. And blend mode, the color is good. And it's already at a opacity because that whole layer is at an opacity, right? So it's got a transparency to it. Okay, I'm gonna do that. And they sign like that. That's kind of cool. It's kind of nice. It's gonna be there. Now this thing's so big. And again, I can change it. I can do a command T. I can transform that box if I want to. Um, I'm gonna kind of leave it as it's so big. I just want to kind of center it. So I know I am at 12 by 12, so six is the center. I can make guides. If I hold down my cursor over my rulers and I just drag in, I can get a guide. Now here I'm putting it in at six, I'm dropping it at six. So I can kind of see where that is. And I do a command T, I can see if I'm lined up. That's a center box there. I can see if I'm lined up there. Likewise, if I wanted to do a, a horizontal one, six by six. So that's the dead center of this. Um, and I may decide, you know, hey, what? I want this, all this whole box to be above. So I can just kind of drag it up here just a little bit. And I maybe I want even the pink part to be above. And we're going to call that a day. So I just rescaled it based upon uh, my guides that I dropped in on there. And the guides are not permanent. Um, let me see if I have my lock. These are unlocked. So if you ever go to click them and you can't move it, you see the little kind of cursor chain, go to a uh, window, sorry, view guide, and you'll see um, lock guides are unlocked. Okay. So right now they're open. Um, so it's not a problem. And if you don't see them, you can turn them off. Um, command col semicolon will turn those off. So it just turns them off. They're not gone. If I do that, it turn command semicolon turns them back on. Okay. And, and again, they're, these are adjustable. I can clear those out and change those to fit to where I want them to be. Uh, six. Now I got to save again. I can see my asterisk there. So I'm just going to hit save. So I, again, I'm not losing anything as I start to go. All right. All right, so I'm going to put, I'm just going to put a couple of words in here as the, the songs that are on the album. And I'm just going to do the standard type horizontal tool. And I'm going to do um, each one. I'm going to do each one separate. So I'm just kind of clicking and it's pulling up type. This was set on a left. We'll do that. So it's kind of a, a left justify. And we just do number one. Channel. Okay. So that's the first song. And I'm I'm not crazy about that type right now. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna highlight it real quick and go to my character and see what I have in here that's gonna work. Again, I'm looking for something that's legible. Um probably the first thing we kind of think, do I want a serif or sans serif? This is a serif you can see the little handles are a little on there where something like this is a sans serif, sans serif but it's also very kind of decorative so like the the i the a looks like a b kind of thing so that's kind of a more of a specialized kind of font um this abba font is kind of a decorative just the way it is um this is a pretty standard um sans serif uh, I spelled piano wrong. It's looking weird. Is it wrong? Come on, somebody tell me. Is it right? No, that's right. P I A N O. Okay, I'm just like looking at something. Something looks weird. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually pick this this typeface here called Al Alvar Essential, 
which I, what I like about it is it's got a variety of different cases. It's all the same typeface, but you can see there's thin, thin italic, ultralight, ultralight italic, light, light italic. So the cool thing about this is you can play with this. Um, so I might make these, the, this album, the names uh, bold. Okay, and then when I get to down here where I do some credits or stuff like that, I may go with a, a lighter um, typeface. So there's one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna option and drag and that's gonna give me a duplicate. And then I'm gonna just kind of change it, right? I don't wanna even mess with the type or the size number two. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna make up names. Saturday night. Now I'm doing them separate because I want to be able to move, maybe move these around. Um, it can, it's real, you can adjust the letting, how much space is between. Um, and once you have it kind of set up, I like this, I can actually click on two and then hold the, the option down. And as I drag, I'm going to drag both. And it gives me kind of guides over here to do, and it's not quite right, but I want to, um, I want to have that flexibility with this. Um, if I just, let me just show you here. If I just kind of did, get rid of that totally. If we go up here and I hit return and to, um, I could come in here, I could highlight all of this. Just quick, quick, and I can adjust the letting here. I can just kind of, I'm just dragging over it to get it to where I want it to be. Okay, so if you if you hold your your mouse over top of the letter or the the thing of it does, if you hold it over the number, it doesn't do it. But here, it does. So if I make this, you can see it's enlarging. But right now, it's only enlarging that one typeface or that one sent line because the other one was not highlighted. Okay. So, um, you know, either way, many times I just kind of do lines individually. I guess in this case, it probably would be fine to do with the returns with that. So we're just going to take those off, pull that up. I'm just going to add in a third line, a third song. Um, Okay, so those are there. And again, I don't know, that feels like a little big. So I'm just gonna select it and I'm gonna just scale it down a little bit. And I want it to be too close to the edges. And I wanna give it a little bit of breathing room over here that was getting a little bit too tight. So these are all here. This layer was deleted. There's nothing in that. Um, so we have the letters and we can just kind of keep building up what would be what songs would we hear on that album? Now, again, because this background photo is so complicated, um, I'm going to do another opacity box down here uh, for uh, the words. And again, it doesn't need to opa opacity. It could just be a box uh, down below. So let me just make a new layer. And I'm just gonna draw it in. So I could just kind of leave it there, but just feel, if I left it like this, it feels very heavy. Um, so I'm trying to balance it out. And I'm going to look back here. What did I do? I had at 50%. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to make this 50% also to kind of match. And maybe this time I don't do the, the outline or the stroke, I should say. And I'm going to just put in, again, some type. And... Okay, so that's there. We're just gonna be listing out what would be, who would be in the album. And I'm gonna scale that down a little bit. So you should scale first, get your font size to the right size. 
and then you can play with the letting if you want to. Okay, so. Look at it there. Then you would have like the artists and who was on drums and who was on whatever, um, who were the members of the band. Um, other things, again, you're going to find typically on a record album is um, some copyright information. So I'm going to zoom in so we can put that in. Um, and let me do this. I'm going to change that typeface. So we're in that Al Alva, Al Alvar essential group, and I'm on bold, and I'm going to make that a medium. So it just kind of lightens that up a little bit. And then I'm going to do another type down here. Um, and we're going to do option C. Okay, so I'm looking for the copyright. So what I'm doing right now, you can't see, but I'm holding option down and kind of hitting key. So like option T is that and option Y is that. So that's not right. And I, like I can sit here and do this all day or I can go to my glyphs. Remember the glyphs are the little characters for that. And I'm gonna highlight this. So we're in there. So we're at the Alvar and I'm just gonna kind of flip through here and find that. I know they have it, here we go. So I'm just gonna double click it and it puts it in. Okay, so if I wanted anything else in here, I could do that, um, you know, including copyright or some fractions, or if I needed the accent, right? So if you're, you're, some, if you're working with a, a band or, or a musician, that their, their name or the name of the album you're making has an accent in it, you, they'll have those here, right? So if I want to put an accent on, I could just type to E, go over to E, whoops. Come on. I don't want to do that. It's going to be E. I could do the E accent. Okay. Could do those kind of things. I like those spots. Um, hold on a second. Computer can't plug. Plug it in. It's going to go to sleep and knock you guys all off. Okay. Um, so copyright, we're typically going to find down here. So copyright 2021, and then the copyright also has the um, company or whatever. So it's Billy Joe Records Incorporated. Now I know that's big, so I'm just going to come to my character and I'm going to scale that down a little bit. And that's going to go somewhere down here. Again, you're going to have that, and there, there could be some other kind of legalese stuff. And and I'll, we'll, we'll, we're going to Google it real quick just to see what's showing up on there. And then the other thing you're going to want to typically have is a UPC. Now let me see what I want to do with that. I want to put the UPC down here, so I'm going to make this box smaller. Command T. I'm just going to. If I want to make the box smaller without making it all proportionally smaller, I want to keep the like the the width hold down the shift key as you do it, and then you're just moving one thing. Okay, so if I want to just move it in, hold the shift, and I'm just gonna drag that in and out. I'm not adjusting the, the heights. Okay, so you can do that. So this will be filled up with additional text. Um, let me just see what this is reading at. See, that's 20 points, that's still pretty big. So I'm going to pull that down because I know the legal type probably should be pretty small, like 12 point in this case. So it's fairly small. It's there. You see it, but you're not paying too much attention to it, which is kind of what you have to do or you want to do. And I want to add a UPC. So I'm going to just go to Google. Before I do that, let me, let me save this. Okay, go back to Google. I want to get a UPC. So U, UPC is universal product code <clears throat> and the barcodes. So again, as, as students, we can do what we want. 
And it's kind of, if you ever wonder, what is that? Um, this first number stands for the company. And then this is like the item number. So it just kind of gives you an idea of what that code means. So that code that you see on a product is unique. And um, when you're at the store, they'll type in that number. So whenever they scan it, or you scan it now with all the self checkouts, it's reading that number. So these bars stand for these numbers, all these numbers that are on here. Okay, so that's what that is. So I'm just wanna get a, um, a UPC, we'll call that one good. There we go. So I'm just gonna drag that over, put that on my desktop. And I want to, just, I'm gonna open it. Desktop and I called you. UPC. Nice. UPC. That's there. I'm going to copy it into my record here. Drop it in. So it's there. It might be a little small, but I think it's pretty good. If I want to make it a little bit bigger, I can. It might pixelate a little bit, but I'm not super worried about that. And why do we do this? Well, by putting these kind of items on here, like the barcode and the copyright information, um, it starts to make things look legit, okay? It actually makes them look like they're not a school project because in, in real life, you would have this stuff. And if you didn't do it um, because it was a school project and a teacher didn't tell you to, if you showed it to somebody, they would kind of, they'd be, they wouldn't think it was real. So our whole goal is to kind of, fake whoever we show this to it into thinking that this was a real project and I actually worked with Billy Joel and his friends and made this record album. Okay, so um, that's kind of the back album. It's the same. And again, I use the back as a whole new place that you can start to design and create. It does not need to look like the front. Um, so I'm gonna just save this now. We saved it. I'm gonna do a, a save a copy. And we'll do it as a, a JPEG so I can bring it in here, class picture. Boom. Quality 12, perfect. So I'm making it a JPEG so it's all flat. I'm going to open that JPEG. Really back JPEG. Right, so I don't need the PSD file anymore. I'm just here. Command all, command C for copy. Now I'm back over here to the album. So I'm gonna mute this in a sec. So I wanna do the, I'm no longer the cover. We're gonna do the back. So assume we did the cover, we, we saved it. And now I'm going to paste this in. And it's big, it's too big for my 12 by 12. And we're just gonna scale it, just grabbing the corner, command T and just dragging it down. And it's pretty big, you can see here. Uh, but that's okay. Up, up here. Okay, so we're, uh, looks like we're good. Maybe a little bit bigger over here. Um, a little bit at the top. I can, I'm seeing there's a little minute line there. I need to go a hair bigger. Okay. So we are there. Um, and remember, we just, all we have to do is save it because we're in this kind of uh, um, template file. Command save, pop it over, and now it's changed it here on our album. Hmm. Um, so we would just do this twice. It's very simple, right? Now we've got, you know, the mock-up. Maybe I don't want the big green thing behind it. Maybe I want something different. Let's pick on the color. It's too dark. We'll get something light. Oh, that's kind of nice. I love that blue. That's, kind of, that's, that's a sexy blue. Mm -hmm. Blue green going on there. Um, and we got it. Now I know the 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 middle the album here. I should say the um, record. The record itself, the vinyl itself, the artwork is um, not what we want, right? It's not, we don't really want um, the assembly. So let me open that up. We're just gonna switch that just to do it. 
we had Ed, Ed, Ed in there. I'm going to change that to Billy. And didn't we call this? That's good. I think we called it space, if I remember. I'm just going to put that in the center. I'm going to turn on the see where that's going. So I need to make a, we're going to do a center. I'm just going to fix those that I'm just clicking and dragging. And that looks right there. Okay, so I'm going to just save that again. That's going to change it. Close that. And you see here, it put that in there. So we're back to where we want to be with the appropriate artist, that type of thing. Um, and then we're going to save it, right? We're going to always save as we work. Um, I'm going to do a save as just for the sake of saving as. B. And, and if we were to turn this in, again, we'll go back through this. I would just save a copy. I think I can do a PDF here. Let me see. We keep changing things. Photoshop PDF, bam. Now it's going to be a PDF. You put your name on it, you know, record, record back or whatever. You're going to ultimately, we're going to make this one, one PDF. So it really doesn't matter as long as you name them the way you want to do it. Uh, we'll save the master as the new name. Hit save. Um, I get my um, PDF preferences and I'm going to go through these. So I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to do what I would do and I will. Um, go through this with you guys individually as a group <laughs> and then i have that over here so i have that file that i can come to so i'm just looking up acrobat can you guys hear that in the background there the noise the tv no Yes, no. Oh, can't hear it. Okay, I had something on, and next thing you know, cops is on TV. I don't know how it got on. And they're back there chasing somebody. I'm like, well, you guys hear a siren going on in the background of me. So, you know, I'm like, you guys are going, what the heck is he doing? There's all those police sirens in the background. And look at that guy. Save that as. Here it is vinyl record B copy. So it's a PDF, it's three mags, pretty sweet, really small, and there it is. Okay, and that's what you would, will turn in. Um, and you know, the quality is fine. It, it's not perfect, but <clears throat> I made it really small. We'll, we'll do it a little bit bigger, I think. But um, yeah, quick and easy and nice to go uh, like that. So that is the, the back mock-up, okay? Now I want the real quick, um, this one here, I got the UPC off the line. Um, I just Google record album backs. I'm just trying to find some that maybe show some of the stuff. So here you can see UPC <clears throat> and you can see some of the legal. Let's see if it pops up. Um, the album, these are the, the songs that are on it. It's, it's a low res picture and there's the legalese. The other thing I forgot to say you could put in there is the um, like the logo for the record company. Many times you'll see that on there. Walmart. Walmart, Walmart put something up as explicit. Down here we see original sound recordings made by EMI Records, Apple, that's the record company. There is the uh, barcode, the list of songs. Um, so this is coming off the, the CD. That's why it's got these extra tabs. But again, you get the information that's gonna be on there. So in this case, they tell you the, the, the length of the song and who wrote the song. They're not telling us who's in the band there. Um, so sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It really depends on um, the album. Um, the, the band members may be listed on the inside. 
So I'm, you know, not too worried about it, but you can kind of see here, that's an old one, old school there. There's some legalese down here, no barcode on that one. Um, if it's gonna go into a store, you're gonna to have to have a barcode on it. Um, they just, just what it is. Everything has to have barcodes today. It's kind of crazy. Uh, okay, so pretty much what we covered. Logos, copyright, the name of the, the songs that are on the disc. Um, <clears throat> like I said, maybe artists, maybe not. Again, that, that's kind of an optional. I don't know if I put that as a thing, but um, we'll straighten those out. Okay. But again, I would use the back as a canvas, right? I mean, you know, there's no reason, you know, here's, you know, they put artwork here. And I know that's totally different than the front. Now, is it the best? Who knows? That's what they did, but that was back in 62. Um, we can obviously do a lot more today. And we have ways of, of working with a type to put it over, especially with like opacity boxes or, or just calling out a box and, you know, putting the, the words in. It was really difficult in, in the older days of, of graphic design to do that. So um, we don't have that problem today. So I think we may as well be creative. I mean, this is nice, right? There's a picture here, the birds chirping and all that. This is, so um, think about that. All right, so there's here, we'll pull this up. Okay. Any more? All right, questions, questions. Nope. Um, when we show the back of it, do you want us to flip the record around or no? Well, you really wouldn't flip the record. You would just maybe make a new um, Yeah, that's what I mean. Label. Like show yeah, you could put the a record without the design. Yeah, you could put a new label on. Oh, you mean put this record on the other side? Remove it? They flip flop the whole thing. Let me just see. I here. guess so. Um, uh, let me get to the file here. Image. I'm going to flip the canvas. Let me just see. There we go. You mean like that? Uh, no, but all right. You guys meant moving the, moving the album over so the record's coming out the other side? No, I meant like uh, the design of the record. Because like you wouldn't have it on the back of the record. You know what no. I mean? Well, I actually technically, on the, and I didn't do it here partly from time. They usually put they put side one on there, or they'll list the out the songs that are on side one. Does that makes sense. Mm, okay. So if we go back here, and um, let me see if I can get one to pop up. Jeez. So on a, on a 45, they just list the name of the song. So it's only one, but um, it's pretty common. They have the um, name of the songs. On it. So these are the songs that are on that, that side of the album. Not always the case. Sometimes it's just side one. Um, that's partly why they're on the back. Also, this is only got no, that's like a one song there. Let's put all this one. Let's see. So, so has Walmart got like a little like Amazon thing going on? This is like this is like sold and shipped by somebody else. Looks used, definitely. Anybody know? Anybody shop at Walmart? Anybody want to admit they shot that Walmart? 
Okay, so here you can see in person side one, uh, lighthouse, and then there's the list of the songs. So you can, I'm not getting you like you got to go crazy with all this, but you can do that. Um, but but typically at, at the very least, it'll say side one, side two, just so you know. Um, and you can reference the back of the album also for um, what songs are on what side. So, okay, good question. Other questions? Not a, not good. All right, I'm pop in. Let me just double check the attendance before we go. So, like I said, online, we now have the that template file you can start to work with and play. If you have problems, let me know. We'll be using it again. Um, we do have the, the basic um, outline of the project and a due date on that. Um, so you can start to work on this. Again, we've got like two and a half weeks. So we've got plenty of time to make this happen. Um, so I want you guys to work on it, but don't, don't stress. We've got time. And I actually probably, as we get a little bit closer, I'm going to ask you guys to um, open it up on your screen and share your screen with me so I can see it real quick. And I can give you a couple quick comments before you actually turn it in. Um, just to make sure everything's going okay. So if you have, if you start to work on it now and you're like, hey, I want to show you something next week, um, you know, Monday or something like that, feel free to let me know and I can take a look at it, whether it's during our time here or right after we, we stop type of thing. Um, so we'll, we'll be doing that. All right, questions, issues, concerns, anything? Okay. Um, Professor, I do have a quick question. Yes. Um, what ratio do you want uh, realistic images with illustration? I did ask, I asked if I can do illustration last week, but I was just wondering the idea that I have, I think it mostly includes like some il illustration. Do you want like a majority of it to be like life natural pictures or? No, I, I, I'll give you the, the creative freedom. You know, okay, I, just want to make sure. Yeah, I, I mean, do what you think is going to look nice. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah, I'm not, I don't want to limit you guys and say, hey, it's got to be this or it's got to be that i mean i i like creativity you know and i want you to be able to utilize photoshop as a creative thing so please share your creativity with this um i, I know i can look at it and know and if i have a question hey can you do this in photoshop i'll ask you but i don't i don't think it, it's it's not about it's not about that i i i know assuming you guys are getting everything you're going to be fine with photoshop so by all means, if you want to draw something and then scan it in, take a photo and bring it in, you're still going to have to do work with it. I mean, even if you scan a picture or some, you have to get in there oftentimes and clean it up and, and make it look presentable. Um, so you're going to have to use Photoshop for that. Uh, our, all the way I think I've recorded everything. I, I'm, I think we're up to date. I was looking, I think it was like one day that I was missing. And I'm trying to find it. Um, I was looking, so we guys are, I'm gonna get the comment. I think it was missing maybe one day. Let me double check. Cause I was getting confused cause I got tied up with things and didn't upload quick enough. And we had a, we've had a couple of days off in between 15th, one day, 13th. Today is the 20th. So we should have the 20th. And let me just see if I have the 20th. I'll find it if I do. If I have it, I'll put it up. If I didn't, it may have gotten something weird documents. 20th, I have a 20th. 
So that would have been Monday. And let me see if I uploaded that. I didn't put it on the website yet. And let me see here. I just uploaded it. So that's coming. That's the 20th. It's there now. So I think this, once I get this one up on there, on the website, we're, we're good. That should be everything. Jordan, so like, what is Okay. Does that, does that answer the question? What was that? Tell me. Is that, that good? And um, I'll do that now as we're speaking. Other questions? While I upload the new. And so this is Monday's class, and then I will put in today's, obviously, when we get done today. Anything else? For the day today or Wednesday. So start working on the albums, get in your ideas together. Again, there's no rush. So I want you to kind of work, experiment. Um, failure is a good thing, guys. It's good to fail things. It's good to kind of mess things up um, and, and come back and, and um, realize, oh, that didn't work. Because we learn from that. We, we, we learn from um, making mistakes. So <laughs> don't be afraid of doing that, okay? I give you time because I want you to make mistakes and I want you to, to get time to learn. Okay. All right. Questions? Anything else? So we got that there. Boom, 20. Monday, September. 20. All right, so we're good. I'm going to upload this. So that'll be all, I think we're all the class sessions that we've had so far. And we've got the um, album mock-up in there. And we're good to go. Um, that's so weird, that clicking. My, I'm going to blame it on my daughter if something doesn't work. Okay. Um, anything else? All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Um, All right. You know what we need? We'll meet. Thank you, Professor. What's that? All right. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Have a nice weekend. Natalie, I, get, yeah, I think I got you, Natalie. Let me just double check here. Thank have you. A have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Just a really quick question. Was I checked off today? I'm sorry, say again. Um, was I checked off today? My internet was kind of going back and forth with the um, the class. I'm sorry, it was like, it's, it's, it's not coming through on my side. Say again. Oh, sorry about that. I was asking, was I um, marked today because my internet was kind of bouncing back and forth with the, no, yeah, um, I got the classes? You. I, got, I got you, yeah. Oh, sweet. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Thank you.